That that was the dumbest thing ever last time. That made no sense. Eddie Alvarez throws an illegal knee. Justin Poirier can't continue fighting. And they call it a no contest. Such a stupid sh I don't I don't understand. It should have been disqualification win for Poirier. It literally makes no sense. You do something illegal, you should lose if the other person cannot continue fighting. Would be my thought process. Only problem with that is then you get fighters, like as soon as anything happens, legal be like, no, can't fight, and they automatically get the win. So, I mean, you'd have to have a, some system in play, but I don't think you really could do that. But at the same time, I don't know. It just seems like it, I mean, yeah, I don't know. You throw an illegal knee. That's the main issue with it, though, is like you do something illegal in a fight, and then the other fighter is just like, no, I can't fight, boom. Automatic victory. So it shouldn't really be that way either. But then again, it's like, you can use it the opposite way. What if you're losing the fight and you do something illegal? Kind of how Alvarez was. I think he was kind of losing that fight up to that point. I would say. You're losing the fight up to that point and then you throw an illegal knee. What should happen is it should, if it's, it depends. I think if it's first round and it happens, maybe this is how they should do it. If it's first round and it happens, right? Then it ends up being a no contest, third, first round. But if it's later into the fight, second round, third round, they go to judges scorecards if the guy can't continue fighting for the first two rounds. And that's decides. It either ends up being a no contest or if the other dude was winning the fight, the guy that got illegally like hit. I don't know. It just seems like it's if you do something illegal in a fight. Oh my god. It's making it easy on me, dude. Threw out all 45. Well, ripperoni. Who did Alvarez fight? Um, it was Dustin Poirier. They fought before and it ended in a no contest. Alvarez illegally need Dustin Poirier, and Poirier was winning the fight up to that point. And what ended up happening was Poirier said he couldn't continue fighting because he got rocked from the knee. And so they called it a no contest. Yeah, but everyone thought that it was an illegal knee at that point, MAGA, as well, right? Yeah, Weidman ended up losing. But they called it an illegal knee, didn't they, during the fight? It was weird. That was, like, one of the weirdest situations. One minute, I need to do something real quick.
What up, Ando Senpai? Do I think Cormier will win against Lesnar? I do, yeah. I do. He's the better fighter. Lesnar's the bigger man, but... Size only matters so much. Also, here's the th biggest thing, right? Is if UFC does this by the, the book, how they're supposed to, Lesnar should be getting tested by USADA. And I mean, Lesnar's 100% on the juice, dude. So, if he has to go off that shit for six months before the fight, by the time the fight comes around, he's going to be in a pretty bad state. I would imagine. If he's actually off the stuff. He'll get an exemption from USADA. Maybe. Cormier in his press conference said he'd be willing to pay for his own te uh, drug testing, but from what I hear about that is that that shit's super pricey. Six figures pricey. Apparently for all the tests and whatnot and for getting people to go to the like Depends I guess on what the level would be too though, but apparently if it's pretty thorough testing, it's a shitload of dough Zero blade, it's hard for me to say because I, I mainly just use this headset. I haven't really ever used a wireless headset. Uh, mainly because I plug directly into a, uh, my mixer for my audio, dude. So it's a little bit different setup than what would be typical. So I can't really comment. I can tell you that this headset's really nice and that I enjoy this headset. Why would he pay for it himself? If he didn't trust that trust that USADA would do its job properly. Last time Lesnar fought, he fought against Mark Hunt. And he ended up testing positive, like they ended up having like positive tests come out from him after the fight was over. And a lot of people believe that UFC knew that he was on shit leading up to that point, obviously. And then, uh... But still let him fight so that they could sell the pay-per-views, right? That's what some people think. So, in a press conference, DC, like, it was literally right after his fight, after he beat Miocic. They asked him about fighting against Lesnar. And he said that he won't fight Lesnar unless he, he's, do, he's doing stuff by the book. Unless he's clean. Because obviously people know Lesnar's on PEDs. I mean, he's in the WWE, the size he is. I mean, he takes, he takes PEDs, right? Well, if you saw that, he has to go through a testing pool for six months before they can even fight. So it's going to be like six, at the very least, it's six months pr before a fight that he has to go without PEDs. If you know anything about PEDs, if someone's been on like testosterone steroids for a long time, right? Like their body normally after they go off of that is just, you can't, you can't produce testosterone yourself. Your hormones get all out of balance. Your strength goes down. You know, a bunch of different things happen. So, I mean, by the time he'd actually fight DC, he'd be pretty jacked up. But if, you know, DC thinks that USADA might not do his job because UFC wants to sell pay-per-views, then, you know, getting his own testing wouldn't be a half bad idea. It's a weird thing, though. 
It's a weird thing, though, because... If... Here, here's, like, the whole thing behind it. If Lesnar does test positive, then he's out of that fight. And I can tell you right now, DC wants that fight to happen because it'll be a huge money fight for him. You know, not, don't know how things work in the UFC. The champion that has the belt, they get a percentage from the pay-per-views. Pay they get a percentage of the money from the pay-per-view money. On top of whatever their fight, whatever they're already paid. So, I mean, you sell a big pay-per-view fight, right? You hype up the fight more they, to sell more pay-per-views. The more pay-per-views they sell, the more money they make. That's how things end up working. So, I mean, DC wants that fight to happen. If Lesnar ends up testing positive and gets pulled out of the fight, that fight never happens. He never gets to that fight. And that's like a huge payday that he misses. Like a huge payday. Like that fight's going to sell a bunch. So it's kind of a weird situation. It's like you want the dude to be clean when you're fighting him. But the thing is, if he ends up testing, you know, testing positive for something, like do you really want to miss out on that fight because the dude's on PEDs? You'd think what would be better is just fight the dude, you knowing he's on PEDs, right? And then... Why did it look like my bullets were shooting so high? What would be better is if, even if you knew the dude was on PEDs, still fight the guy. And then afterwards, have it come out that the dude was on PEDs. Just like what happened with the Mark Hunt fight. Because then at least you still get... You know, you, get, you still get pay, end up getting paid. But you have to fight against a dude that's a cheater that's jacked up on steroids, etc. So it's a kind of a weird situation. It's a very weird situation. Because I'm going to tell you right now, DC wants that fight to happen. But who knows? Maybe, maybe he would rather not have the fight if the dude's on PEDs. Maybe that's the case. It's weird. It's a very weird situation. <laughs> Zeroing looks off. Yeah, it did look off, but here's the thing. You can't zero a 3x, right? So something else was wrong. Fucking dude hugging a rock, man. QBU, where does it stack in terms of guns you want to find? When it comes to DMRs, it's a pretty good gun. It's really, I mean, mo like most guns, it comes down to preference, dude. But, uh, I mean, it's pretty good. It depends on how much damage it actually does. Because I've had, like I say in that review, if you guys haven't seen my review yet on the QBU on my YouTube channel, and uh, whenever a new gun comes out, right, a lot of people are like, hey, this, what do you think of the new gun, etc. So on my YouTube channel, I have, like, me giving all my thoughts on the QBU. And I couldn't find good stats for it. I, I saw like different places saying different things on damage. Like this place said this thing, this place said that thing. Some place said that it did like 55 damage. Some other place said that it did like 48 damage. Some place said that it did 44 damage. It was the weirdest thing, right? But it, we they have said that it's supposed to do more damage than the mini. Um, but w some places show that it even does more damage than the SKS, which is 53 damage. If it does more damage than the SKS, then it's a really good gun, but I don't know how much damage it does. I almost feel like I have to do my own test to figure it out. There's another dude right here with a suppressed vector. You do know that two headshots, yeah. I mean, two headshots, even from like an AR, will take someone down with a level two helmet, right? So, it's that doesn't. What needs to happen is we need to find an SKS and a mini, and we need to have 
we need to shoot someone, and then we need to clip it and see how what one does more damage, and see then we can figure out exactly what the damage is. Because if it ends up doing more damage than the SKS, then it's a really good gun. But even if it doesn't do more damage than the SKS, it's still a good gun. It's better than the Mini was. And I'd say the Mini was about on par with the SKS before. So, I mean, it's up there. And it's super va fast bullet velocity, just like the Mini is, so. I'd say it's better than the SKS. Even if it does slightly less damage, I think it's probably better than the SKS. Bullet gotcha. Seven left. I think there's more people down east of me across the road. We're still in the circle here. A lot of circles been ending by Paradise Resort, man. A lot of them. I'm just staying back, scanning this side, man. So we got a guy all the way across from us north with an M4. It's shifting north. If anyone is still east in these buildings, they have to come out. This is what happens to these players that hide in buildings in corners the whole game. They come outside and they don't know what to do because they only play inside buildings in corners the whole game. It's a crutch. You get to the end of the game or further into the game, but then when you actually have to come outside, you end up not doing so well.
Here we go. Both of the guys fighting. He's either right below us or he flanked up. And he flanked up. Dead! And his name 15 is of them, bro! Four for four! Four for four! Let's go. Four for four on the day. 15 kill games. Are you kidding me? I told you today's the day. I told you the curse is broken, bro. We're taking home the victories. Chicken dinner at the chicken dinner. Four for four. Four in a row. Four in the day. 100% win streak. 15 kill victory. Are you shitting me? No, 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 no. Not shitting you. Not shitting you. It's real. It's happening.